The Vulkan Cyber Risk Management Platform brings all of your cybersecurity tools together into one place. From your asset management tools to your vulnerability scanners, remediation, and communications tools, you can get a consistent and consolidated view of the risk your organization is facing. That lets you prioritize the most important factors and take action without having to navigate through all of the separate tools in the stack. I'm Mike with Vulcan Cyber, and in this installment, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the platform and its user interface. So let's get started. Everything starts here, on the dashboard. This is just an overview, and I go into greater detail on these features in other videos, but this is where it all starts. There are both data flow and operational views, and I'm going to start with a default data view. Across the top, we have the Security Posture Rating, or SPR, and Risk Mass. These give a high-level picture of the situation in your environment and can be filtered down by business unit to give a more granular view. Next, we see the raw attack surface data and a visualization of how we condense that raw data into a more usable form. Below that, you see how vulnerabilities are prioritized and an overview of the threat intelligence data for your environment. From there, you can see the top business groups and how they are performing by risk mass or security posture rating. Finally, we see an overview of the active remediation campaigns that are being managed by Vulcan Cyber. The operational view is similar, but omits the raw attack surface and data reduction panels to let security operations focus on the more critical information. The Vulnerabilities pane lets you drill down into vulnerabilities that have been identified in your environment. You can take action on them directly from here, whether it's to start a remediation campaign or simply to let the correct team know what's going on. This view also lets you drill down into individual vulnerabilities so you can see the details and get a better understanding of what's involved. We also give you views into what we call vulnerability clusters. These let you filter on related vulnerabilities based on affected software or by CVE. We have videos that go into more detail on these features both on the clustering capability and how to take action to address the vulnerabilities we've prioritized. Campaigns are what Vulcan Cyber calls our section for tracking vulnerability management and remediation programs. Remediation campaigns, if you will. Here, campaigns are used primarily for tracking purposes. You'll be able to sort them by type, name, which you can customize, when the campaign was started, what sources it's based on, maximum risk, what vulnerabilities are included, the number of vulnerability instances that are there and have been fixed, its current SLA status, whether it's breached the SLA or whether it's compliant, and what actions have been taken on this campaign. As you'd expect, we have another video that goes into more depth on managing Vulcan campaigns. With any risk management program, there will be times where you want to carve out an exception for special cases. These are instances where the organization has chosen to accept the risk and doesn't want to have the specific case appearing in the risk management interface or reports. For example, a lab environment that the scanner and asset management tools see, but that is not accessible outside of its restricted space. Or some kit that reached end of life is already scheduled for replacement and has compensating controls in place. To that end, Vulcan Cyber lets you place exceptions to keep specific vulnerabilities from appearing in the main interface, but are tracked separately here. Exceptions are created as an action on the Vulnerabilities tab. Like most information in our user interface, you can sort them by different columns, and they are grouped into several categories. Pending, which are awaiting approval. Expired, which have passed their expiration date. Approved, which are currently active and decline, which are proposed exceptions which were not allowed. As a vulnerability management platform, Vulcan Cyber shares some characteristics with a security orchestration, automation, and remediation platform. 
While Vulkan provides a broader scope than a typical SOAR system, we do include a range of automation functions to enhance security operations and IT efficiency. The platform includes several pre-built playbooks you can use out of the box, or as a starting point to create your own, effectively making them a template for your own custom playbooks. And naturally, you can create your own custom playbooks that meet your exact needs. The playbooks include where you are sourcing the vulnerabilities, what conditions you require, what sort of asset it is, again, with conditions you can customize. Then the actions you specify, from opening trouble tickets to deploying remediation scripts. Finally, you can automatically execute a follow-up action if the SLA is exceeded. You can sort the existing playbooks, both default and the ones you create, by multiple factors. And if you drill down into one, you can pull up the activity logs to see how active it's been. I know this example from my demo system isn't exciting, but you can see how the activity log is regularly updated. The Assets panel is where the platform consolidates all the asset information it has on the environment. There are four panes on the Asset tab, covering the different categories of asset Vulkan can manage, starting with Hosts, Code Projects, Websites, images, which are typically Docker files or virtual machine images, and cloud resources, which may be on any of the various cloud platforms. The top line of the host pane also includes breakdowns on the number of hosts that are known but don't have any scan data in Vulkan, the total number of vulnerable hosts broken down by criticality, and the number of hosts by operating system. Each of the panes is searchable and sortable by column, as with the earlier examples. These panes can also be broken down by business groups. I mentioned business groups or units earlier, and this is where they're configured. It's a way to group assets into manageable chunks that can be associated with a particular business unit, locality, function, or other useful feature. Each asset can belong to multiple groups, which adds a lot of versatility. We have a separate video that goes into much greater detail on configuring and using business groups, so we're just highlighting this for now. The Remedies tab is where you will find Vulcan Cyber's curated repository of fixes that are relevant to the vulnerabilities discovered on the assets known in your environment. Like other areas of the interface, you can filter by business group. And as with other tabs, you can build search queries to filter down the results that are most important to your situation. Let me give you a demonstration. Here, we're gonna search by Ansible, and then we're gonna search by OS and version, focusing on CentOS 5. As you can see, it filtered down to a much more manageable block. And as with the other tabs, you can sort fields with SPR, risk mass, affected assets, and related vulnerabilities being very popular. As with vulnerabilities and assets, you can drill down into each to get specific information on each one, the number of vulnerabilities and the number of assets that are affected. The analytics tab gives you insights into what's been happening in your environment so you can see how your risk management program is performing over time. The platform includes a range of pre-configured reports right out of the box. For example, a CISO executive summary report, and report on the security posture rating and how it's changed over time. We also let you create your own custom reports that you can save and call up at any time. These reports can be displayed with custom parameters. You can change, for example, the time period, what the effective business groups are, the source type, 
and your risk level. As you can see, the parameters change in real time as you change them up. There is a lot of versatility in the analytics capability, and I've only touched on it lightly in this overview. We have another video that takes it into much greater depth, but you can see how you can use the reporting to see exactly what's happening in your environment. This final one is our connectors tab. This is where you could configure and manage all of the systems that feed data into the Vulkan Cyber Platform, or that can accept data from the platform. These are going to be asset management tools, vulnerability scanners, deployment, and communications tools. We have a video that goes into depth on adding new connectors and managing existing ones, but it is very straightforward. For example, to add a new connector, click on the Add Connector button. Next, click on the connector you want to add, for example, Azure. Then, fill in the required fields, which I'm actually going to skip for the moment. This is one of our demo systems, and what you see in your own organization's instance will likely be different. Vulkan Cyber's risk management platform brings your entire security stack together and lets you work efficiently and effectively as a coordinated whole. This overview was just an introduction to the platform and what it's capable of. We have a series of other videos that go into great detail on the different functions and how to get the most out of them, so check those out. Or reach out and get a demo of the platform so you can see how it addresses the specific concerns in your environment. But for now, thanks for watching.